You're listening to the extended version of the Mark Who 42's Universe Podcast. Mark Who 42 Universe. Hey, this is Vienna Salvatore. Bad news is, no one can hear my name and live. Good news is, you're listening to Mark Who 42. Welcome to Mark Who 42's Universe here on Subspace Radio Network. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten, and with me today is my lovely co-host, Vicki Jakubowski. Hi, Vicki. Hi. You know what I'm about to ask you. What? What I always ask. Must be the weather. Must be. <laughs> One of our guests is laughing right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're all laughing at you. Well... It's 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 actually uh, gearing up to be in the 90s today, but we had massive um, thunderstorms and lightning last night, but no fires this time. Hallelujah! That's great. Okay, I hate fire season. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a great show for you today. The 77 publications are back. Woo-hoo! We've got Ben Collis and Steve Bull. Hi guys. How you doing, guys? Hey. Uh... Hey. Ben, it's like I only saw you yesterday. I know. You didn't ask me about the weather, though. It's officially barbecue season here in England's smallest county, Rutland. Yeah, I went to Rutland Water, Mm -hmm. and it was a sea of barbecue smoke. Okay. And Steve? Yeah, Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been a lovely day here. I do a a little boot camp locally, actually. So uh, I had them guys out. They're all in vest today. It was lovely. I think last time I spoke to you guys, it was snowing where Vicky was. Yeah. Yes, it was snowing up until two weeks ago. <laughs> wow. Okay. And and now we skip spring completely, and we're straight into summer. Nice. Yeah, you don't need the seasons, do you? We. we this has we, been the we, Mark we did Who when 40... I first moved to this town. This has been the Mark Who Forty Two's <laughs> Universe Weather uh, segment, <laughs> and now to the show proper. Hmm. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, Steve and Ben on today to talk about some projects that are going on with the 77 publications. And I want to start with one that is currently going on that lasts for uh, another couple of weeks, uh, Ian Gibson's Lifeboat. Ben, you want to talk a little about that? Um, Sure. So um, Steve and I grew up reading Ian Gibson. Um, Steve is the biggest fan I know of Ian Gibson. Uh, I'll hand this conversation over to him very shortly. But yeah, um, the Lifeboat Kickstarter is a combination of us working with Steve over three years um, and him getting in touch with us about three months ago saying, hey, you know that book I always wanted to get published and we've chatted about before, we need to do it now. And um, so we've been working at it and it's, um, I'm proud to say I'm working with Steve on this. It's his project really. So uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, It's gonna be a fantastic book. Hey, Steve. Um, first of all, before we let Steve talk, when is the Kickstarter o- over? 18th of June. It's actually got, so we're really, it's four weeks um, okay. this weekend. So by the Excellent. time the show goes out, just about three and a half weeks. All right. Steve, since you're the expert on Ian Gibson, why don't you talk a little about this? Oh, well, I, I'm not sure about expert. I was just as, uh, a little bit fanatical as a child. So. Well, that works. That works. I think I think we've covered this uh, before about the influence of 2000 AD and yeah. on our groups, our lives, and where we started out with this. Um, and as a child, I was blown away by a character called Halo Jones, which was written yes. by Alan Moore. So, mm-hmm. which is probably probably the most famous work for Ian Gibson outside of uh, the Judge Dredd work that he's done, and another character called Robo Hunter. Mm-hmm. So they're probably the most notable ones from the uh, British comics. Uh, yeah, Halo Jones absolutely took my breath away to the point that as I grew up and had a family and kids, my first uh, child, my daughter, her middle name is actually Halo. So, oh, wow. Yeah, that, that was it. And that 
actually inspired me trying to find Ian. So as a child, I'd gone, so I lived, I lived in London, North London, and there's a famous shop called Forbidden Planet. Yes. In London. I've been there. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a mecca, right, for anything mm. comic book. Uh, and back in the days, in the 80s, uh, they used to have comic book signings there at mm -hmm. a cafe just near Forbidden Planet. So I was one of those uh, kids down there. Me and a couple of friends would go down, queue for a while, meet the heroes, get get our books signed. So I had many, many books signed by Ian and Alan Moore, etc. back then. Uh, and then had a bit of a hiatus from comics. Uh, had my family, uh, my first daughter, again, gave her the name Halo. And then thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could find Ian Gibson mm -hmm. and get a commission of Halo Jones with my daughter? Oh. So that was the mission I embarked on. Uh, and it took me down a few alleyways and I found a website and got in contact with Ian back then, which is probably about, talking about 2007, I'd imagine. So about 16 years ago. Uh, and he was doing commissions at the time, and we agreed a price, and he liked the idea. And again, over the next six months, he produced this lovely commission, which has Halo Jones in it. It's got um, my daughter, uh, about one, just over one years old, uh, oh. toddling about in it. And um, we like animals, so we had the, uh, the, 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 the crazy robot dog, Toby, in there as well, from <laughs> Halo Jones. Um, and that started, yeah, that started the conversation um delivered on the commission tell me if i'm boring you no oh no, God, no 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 this is, uh, definitely not. This, this no, is an audio you. show we're expecting talking and talking <laughs> yeah, yeah no worries no worries i mean we can't do visuals we have to do something so keep going <laughs> no that's fine and then and then we probably end up we probably end up um after many conversations and the commission being delivered we'll probably end up with maybe a 10 year period where uh, lots of things I think happened in Ian's life, uh, which probably included a divorce, etc., and a few other changes lifestyle-wise. Myself, again, I, I was out of touch with comics for probably that decade until in a fit of nostalgia on Facebook, I started to look at 2000 AD groups, etc., and found Ben's group <laughs> uh, with a number of other groups mm -hmm. uh, and quickly quickly realized that it was the friendliest and uh, nice natured of the 2080 groups out there and started to get actively involved with it. Uh, that probably, that that's probably another story, just that group on its own. Um, <laughs> oh, we'll get to that story next. No. <laughs> exactly. So then, then we get to a point during that group, obviously I end up, uh, we did quite a lot of work journalistic work i think with a lot of 2080 creators um and that brought me full circle to ian gibson on facebook and i think what i wanted to do is because it had been such a an important thing for me i think as a child growing up um too often we wait until our heroes uh leave this worldly plane before yeah. we honor them so i wanted to i wanted to I basically approached him at, uh, it would have been Lawgiver, which is now Lawless, the convention that we, we're sponsoring at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, and discussed actually creating a Facebook group, which then became the imagination of Ian Gibson. And it allowed, what Ian did is he then sent me downloads of thousands of images that he'd created off of his computer. And I would uh, post these regularly onto the imagination group. And they'd get, we, you know, we've got a few thousand fans there. There's a lot of people who love their artwork. Yeah. And he could engage. And I think what we see quite a lot is we see artists really not knowing what an influence they've been on people. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I kind, I kind of coin it as the, these guys, the, the life of an artist is sitting in a room on your own, <laughs> drawing, trying to hit deadlines at all hours, day and night. So... It's only when you go to a convention or a sign-in that you realize yeah. anybody actually cares. Right. So through Facebook and this group, it was really nice actually to see all these people join in, commenting on what his artwork had meant to them, posting pictures of the artwork they had done, copying him, the influences on their style where they've become artists. <laughs> and he engaged with all of these guys. So that's probably oh. been going for maybe four or five years maybe even a little bit longer now um it's just a really good place to hang out 
really appreciate the artwork um we've got you know stuff that you don't see everywhere so i really like the process so you've got the pencils you've got underpaints you've got oh. um stuff commissions that haven't been seen and published um and then that took us to conversations about this this wonderful piece of work uh lifeboat which had found a publisher at one point and then through um some mutual agreement it came back to ian and uh, i think he didn't really want to let it go he really mm -hmm. wanted it to be a personal and a passion project mm. um and i think at the point where i first had conversations with him we were just starting the 77 so i guess from his point of view he was rightly nervous but you know you don't know we see a lot of small press publications and some of them aren't to higher standards yeah. um so he wasn't sure what what was going to be and probably that was probably holding him back from making any agreements with us uh over the course of producing what are we on now we're on nine or ten comics plus annuals plus um side this, ones this and one. a plethora <laughs> a plethora <laughs> yeah, i think there's about 17 publications now i think what you see and hopefully well all the feedback is and i think we get it right um you know they're they're polished polished publications they could sit on a shelf anywhere and stand out, not just blend in. Yeah. Um, and after many, many conversations, yeah, he approached, he came back to us and said, look, let's do this. And here we are um, with all the artwork, with all the sketches behind it, with an active Kickstarter. And I think 17,000 pounds behind it at the moment with about <laughs> four weeks to go. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I can't believe, <clears throat> I can't believe well, I, maybe I can believe how quickly uh, the initial, what is it, 22 minutes uh, went for the Kickstarter, Ben? 12 minutes, 12 minutes. 12 minutes, oh, <laughs> yes, 12 minutes, I was, yeah, okay. You know, it was funny, um, you turn the Kickstarter on, I didn't get on uh, the uh, web for about four hours. So I then go, hey, Ben, congratulations, you got it in four hours. And he's like, no, 22 minutes, and 12 minutes, <laughs> and I'm like, ah. That was kind of cool. And, you know, um, this looks like an amazing book. It really yeah, does. It, it really is. The, the pages, if you see, you know, we'll, we'll send you some images. If you see the pages up close, they're fully painted. They're, they're as good as anything Ian's done at <laughs> any point in his life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful book to the point that I'm actually inquiring about if we can produce um, an oversized edition. That oh. just so we're looking at a three, just the artwork, um, no lettering in the way, anything. So it's basically a connoisseur's book. Yeah, they can really appreciate what's going on if you weren't able to buy one of the actual painted pages. Cool. Wow. Um, I'm just. I would want one of those. Uh, those oversized collector books. Um, Vicky. Well, I think we should talk about what lifeboat is. Yeah. Because people listening to this, if they haven't gone to the Kickstarter yet, which of course they should, they, they should or they definitely the should. They should go to the Kickstarter. Um, but what is Lifeboat, and what is how is it different from some of the other seventy-seven publications? Yeah, so it's um, a standalone story. So this will be book one, which is actually in three parts, um, and it's as I say, it's a standalone story where we do. We will usually have multiple stories to six six to eight pages in a comic. Um, we're going to produce this as a book, as a graphic novel. It's going to be a polished piece, uh, hardback. Uh, there's going to be loads of additional um, information in there, interviews, some of the pencils that we talked about earlier, some of the process. So it's going to be it's going to be something that's just picks up the passion of the whole project. So as well as having a 24 page comic in there, you're gonna have lots of the back. If you, if you really love his work, you're gonna mm -hmm. love the book. Um, and if you want if you want to know what the actual story is about, I can elaborate on that a little bit. I, I think we should, spoilers. give us, yeah. give us, give us a two second, or okay, doesn't have to be two seconds. No, I can do two seconds. because Give us a 25 cent tour of, of the lifeboat. So, so I think I think the first line of his little synopsis for the background story is if Romeo and Juliet had made a child. That's that's how that's the angle. Okay. Um, ah. It's sci-fi, so it's all space-based. It's uh we've got aliens in there. 
we've got um, politics in there. We've got um, we've got some harrowing scenes in there. We've got family. We've got yeah, it's it's all bundled in there. This really does, and it's worth pointing out that uh, I don't think we've harped on this enough, but it's all written by Ian as well. Right. And nice. I think what happens is people kind of they 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 would pigeonhole people. If you're an artist, you can't really be a writer. Right. A writer, mm. you're an artist, and creators are creators there, there's some really good stuff in there and if you've li- uh, read any of the interviews or anything i've done with ian before what you'll see is he has a huge influence on the art but also mm-hmm. the stories that he produces to the point that i don't know I'll, I'll use the word arrogance but he's fallen out with a few companies because he basically if he doesn't like the story or thinks it's silly he'll change it and turn in the pages and it's oh. too late for him to do anything about it so Right now, you've got somebody who who can write. He can really write. Right. And it's a great story behind here as well. I think it's um, hard when you've got someone who is creative and and they're bringing something to life in words and or in art. And it, it's really hard, hard when you've got, I mean, let's be honest, they're usually being counters going, oh, let's do this, this, and this, because it'll bring in more of that and it'll do that. And and it's it it loses integrity and it might be okay, it might be even a solid B product, but when you prefer to do A plus work, it doesn't make any sense and you don't you don't want to produce that, and it gets really frustrating when people ask you to do substandard work, and he's got a reputation to withhold. Yeah. So, you know, people like to say, oh, they're difficult or they're arrogant. Or maybe they know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a few cases of that now. Ian did lots of work with uh, DC, for instance. Mm -hmm. Uh, He did Mr. Miracle, Green Lantern, Mm -hmm. uh, Millennium. um, And there's lots of stories that come out there just because their process was very different to British comics. Yeah. Which meant you'd have like a penciler, you'd have an inker, etc. And it's difficult when you're used to controlling the whole environment of your art. Yes. To then try to deal with that and i think you know that's that's probably a reason why he didn't do more for the american market um to break him out of being pigeonholed i'm sure ben and vicky will get this word he's a storyteller <laughs> 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 that that word came up a lot um a couple of days ago in a yeah. conversation or two we were having but uh, it just it's true and i think that someone like Ian is a storyteller and he wants to tell a story he knows what the story is so you know to have people who are oftentimes not even creative people themselves you know unlike the 77 publications where I feel like everybody involved with it is a creator type person too often when you look at and of course here in America Marvel and DC and even Dark Horse their their businesses first creator second yeah and i could see where that could be exceedingly frustrating when you're trying to get your image across and now you've had 58 people touch it it's no longer your baby it's no longer your creation and um i know a lot of people that we it I'm a control freak myself, so I feel I understand. <laughs> you know, if I'm going to do something and I'm going to put myself on the line, I don't want someone else going, oh, well, you know, do that, do this. It's like, no, I don't want purple hair today. Thank you very much. <laughs> really, it's really interesting that you say that because I kind of I kind of wear a couple of hats with the two, uh, with the, the 77. So one is a creator on the writing side. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also the cover editor and I edit the uh and one of the sub editors and mm-hmm. edit the angle. Now what happens is I also from an editorial point of view, I've got a vision of what it needs to do. And I've got to be considered, I've got to consider commercialism. Yes. So, yeah. you know, I've got to consider the product has to do a certain thing. And it does lead to some difficult conversations or even some yes. difficult decisions with artists, especially from the covers that um come in. I've had a number of issues where I'd say artists that aren't particularly uh, 
don't particularly like what I've done, the decisions I've made, but they're made to get that art to the masses, you know, to get the, get that book to look as good as it can to as many people as possible. And if it's not attractive and people don't want to pick it up and people don't want to buy it, then it doesn't matter how amazing or or whatever what I'm trying to get across. If someone else doesn't look at it and go, ooh, I want to buy this, mm -hmm. then I have yeah. no job. I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say at this point, um, I totally agree with what Steve said and, and, and tying in what Vicky, you said there as well about Ian's kind of um, decision to want to control things, want to have it, you know, the best that he could. You look at the artwork when you get to go onto the Kickstarter, anyone picking up a copy of Lifeboat, it's, it's not that it's Ian's best work. What it is, is it's most realized individual style. It's uh -huh. fully painted. You know, it's not gone through the hands of a penciler, inker, mm -hmm. colorer. I was thinking this the other day about um, how many covers Ian actually got to do with um, 2000 AD. And it's relatively few. Um, considering oh. that he was a stalwart of the comic for right. you know over over 15 years, there are some Halo Jones covers. Um, there's a couple of Robo Hunter ones, but there's not many. And I think the reason is is because Ian's work was only ever shown as as, as rendered ink drawing. It was just literally inking outlines, and most right. of the comic was black and oh. white. You can't get further from black and white than you can with Lifeboat. The colors mm. are insane. His color theory work is just brilliant. The way he puts opposing Adam's. colors, complementary yeah. yes. colors. You know, uh, Steve, the the art that's on the purple, Kickstarter just and blows your mind. Blues. Yeah, absolutely. And you so, know what? If, if yeah. you take just one panel, and I've, I've posted a few panels on the Twitter, I'll, uh, what, my bully at the 77 um, on Twitter, if you just take a panel and show that panel as a piece, right? they're individual pieces of artwork. They've got depth to them, they've got background. If you've got a crowd, yes. you're going to see the people in the background in the crowd. It's not we're not turning out the the, the quick art to mm -hmm. just write a story. You can enjoy every single panel. Sorry to cut you off, Ben. No, I mean, absolutely. I think when, when Steve and I are talking about this, we try and put some kind of gravitas onto what we think the book is. It's not just pure marketing. We call it um, Ian's Magnus Opus, Magnum Opus, because for him, it's the most important book he's done. Yeah. It's taken him years and years and years and years. It might not have hundreds of pages, in fact, mm -hmm. far from it, but the work that he's produced and what he's done for it, I think he wouldn't he, he wouldn't let it go out to anybody. Right. He wouldn't let anyone just handle it. He spent so much time talking to us about even just the books that we did on the quality of paper that we did and insisting that a certain letterer who we discussed in a previous show elsewhere. Yeah. Annie yeah. Parkhouse was, was, was the only letterer he would have. And Annie is the most respected, most decorated, awarded um, le le letterer yeah. on this side of the Atlantic. She's, you know, respected by everybody. And she's worked with Ian elsewhere and understands what he wants. There's a symbiosis there. Mm. Um, Steve's worked hard on establishing this. Understanding with Ian so Ian can... I think in some respects, just go, I can hand over and trust, okay, that this is going to be yeah. a good product. Um, and, and that's where we are with Lifeboat. And uh, just to say, Steve, you didn't mention, it is a science fiction story. Yeah, yes. I you mentioned space. Was... I think it was assumed. Yeah, I think we said space. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I mentioned it was space and there was aliens and there was uh, politics. Yeah, it has got to be science fiction. Yeah. No, actually, it's real. It, 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 it's a, it's, it's real life. It's happening right it's now. It's nonfiction. It's, yeah, it's... <laughs> okay. So if you're interested in uh, getting uh, helping this Kickstarter and getting a copy of Ian Gibson's Lifeboat, where do you go, uh, Ben? You go to Kickstarter, Ian Gibson's Lifeboat. Just Google okay. that. Oh, sorry, just um, Kickstarter.com. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yep. Kickstarter.com. All right. Wow. And it will deliver anywhere in the world. Okay. Yeah, I've got an order. Um, I've actually put a digital order, but next month I'm upgrading it to a hardcover. I just wanted to put money into the pot and then bring it up. Yeah, I think you have to have that book. Yeah. And I definitely would love for the. Uh, table book to come out with just the artwork okay so we're going to take a break here on mark who 42's universe when we come back we're going to talk more with the 77 publications ben cullis and steve bull and i think we're going to talk about a gentleman named john wagner and maybe about bogey 
We'll be right back here on Subspace Radio Network on Mark Who 42's Universe. Don't go away. Don't go away. We'll, we'll be, be back, back with more Mark Who 42 after this. Oh, hey, I got something. Since 2009, we have been the premier cartoon podcast here at the GeekCast Radio Network. We are TuneCast. From taking you beyond the cartoons we grew up with to seasonal saucy tune talk, and now we get the origins of Toonsters everywhere as we ask guests... 30 questions about their cartoon watching experiences, plus so much more. Tooncast is back. Join me, TF2 and Mike, and the rest of the GCR and crew as we give you all the toon talk you will ever need, only on the GCRN. And wherever you consume your podcasts, we are beyond good, beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination. We are all tunes all the time here on Tooncast. Yeah. You are listening to Mark Who 42's Universe. Welcome back to more of Mark Who 42's Universe here on Subspace Radio Network. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten. With me today, as ever, is my co host, Vicki Jakubowski, and our guests from the 77 publications, Ben Collis and Steve Bull. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back to our guests. Hey, hey. Hi there. See, see this time, I said welcome back to the guests, so it's not like there'd be silence until you realize, oh, he was sucking us. <laughs> I, I took care of it that time. I remembered to do that. Uh, oh. So um, we were talking about Ian Gibson's Lifeboat mm-hmm. Kickstarter campaign, and now we're going to switch over uh, to a Kickstarter campaign they're doing that's going to start, uh, I think, very, very soon, um, featuring the work of the gentleman who... I adore because he's a co-creator of Judge Dredd, John Wagner, and his book, Bogeyman. Uh, now, uh, let's talk a little about that. Ben? Okay, so um, John's someone who's been in contact with us over the last year or two. Um, he has another project, which I don't think it would be uh, my place to talk about at the moment, which will be following this as a Kickstarter. Um, okay. We ri- originally were talking to him about that. Um, but then Bogeyman was clearly in his mind and he came to us and said, could you manage the Kickstarter? And I said, I'd love to. And also, can we co-produce the book? So 77s will be co-producing it. Um, clearly, he's been in contact with us over the last couple of weeks, looking at the success of the, the our, our current Kickstarter. Um, and as well as working with Ian on a lot of um projects over the years he's also um pitching in and he's going to be writing the forward for for lifeboat as well so he's got a connection there as well but um yeah on thursday the 25th um next this week this week yeah the bogey, yeah the bogeyman launches um and it's a fully fledged kickstarter campaign video graph um, graphics we've got the artists involved um it's going to have two covers there's going to be pages we've got mike perkins doing the hardback edition so oh. mike's currently doing the batman um at the moment is, is right on that um mike's actually a personal friend of one of our guys at the 77 knows dave healy very well they used to apparently do comic strips together back 30 years ago so there we go um yeah the bogeyman is going to be fascinating it's going to last for about four or five weeks and um, John's very excited about it. So uh, he's entrusted with us to produce that Kickstarter and help with the, dis- the, the, the fulfillment distribution and, um, you know, work on, w- work on getting it out to all the people who are going to back it, hopefully. Ben, I have a question. What is different between the bogeyman that came out in the 90s and this new mm-hmm. book? What, what were okay, the different so, things? Sure. So bogeyman did come out. It's, um, it was released, I think, first of all, in a, British comic called Toxic, which was creator yeah. owned. Um, there were about five or six separate strips um, of Bogeyman. Mm-hmm. Um, John has kept this edition. It is a collection. It's called the okay. Incomplete Case Files. He's taking out one strip, which I think was with a guest artist. Um, Robin Smith is the continuing artist throughout. Mm-hmm. They've done a fresh new. They've done a fresh new strip as well. Um, and as a collection, it's going to be bound, as I said, as a hardbound and a trade. Mm-hmm paperback um it's going to have john's discourse he's going to write an essay about the whole background and workings of the bogeyman 
Robin's going to include prelims. It's kind of a book for someone who may have once had one or two of the books and hasn't got them. And I think for a lot of us, I remember reading it. It's 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. I kind of wasn't really mature enough to deal with one aspect of it. I found it quite humorous, but it is quite dark. Um, yeah. It is, you know, it's, it's about, it's about, you know, crime and, 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 and criminal elements of people in the, in the dark and the belly of, you know, Glasgow or another town similar. Um, and I think I'm really looking forward to seeing it and actually reading it as a mature reader this time around as well. And I think because of that, John's decided he wanted to, as I say, extend the extend the, the, the strip somewhat. So he's included a new a, a new story in it as well. Um, and I just felt I just felt that he knew. He said it was in getting really hard for people to just find copies of it anymore. Yeah. Um, mm. If you get it on Amazon or should I say eBay, probably mm -hmm. they're really expensive. Um, and I just think it had never been reprinted. So he was looking for an option to go to reprint, and he wants to be able to offer that. Will the glossary be included? Because I remember at the end of every question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually, as I'm creating the Kickstarter with John, I'm not necessarily involved in the design of the book, but I am right. in contact with Robin Smith. Um, it's a question that should be asked. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Write it down. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. what was the glossary for? Was it for film noir? references or was it no it was for uh Scottish... slang and ah, other gotcha. uh, yeah because i'm excited to see this i'm a huge film noir fan yeah. um i've seen every humphrey bogart movie that was ever made um i've probably seen every film noir movie that was ever made i might even own every one that's been ever made um <laughs> it's my mother's fault she got me started and, <laughs> uh, and i'm just like I I love this story. Vicky, did you ever see uh, the um, movie that they made of the Bogeyman with Robbie Coltrane? No, I was reading about that and I was like, oh. yeah. I, okay, now I've got to go story. find, you know, yeah. <laughs> I heard it wasn't well received, but I'm like, oh, what the heck? I'll watch it anyway. <laughs> um, there's very, there's very few movies I won't watch. I'll give everything a try. There you but, go. Um, you know, whether you're talking about, um, you know, Maltese Falcon, or even go even back to the German expressionists and do M. Um, it, it just to have something in that caliber, even though, okay, you, for people who don't know the story, um, if I understand correctly, I read a two second synopsis and I might be wrong. So please correct me. You have a Scottish mental patient who thinks he's Humphrey Bogart. Is, is that the short version of it? Okay. In a nutshell, yeah. yeah. Hey, then I read with a good synopsis. Hilar with, yeah, with not hilarious consequences. <laughs> no, <laughs> film noir is, is not <laughs> hilarious. It's it's no. dark. It's gritty. Yeah. It's ugly. Yeah. Even in with the 40s and the Hays Code and limiting what they could and couldn't show, um, it was still really dark. There were people getting beat up. There were bad things happening. Oh, yeah. You know, you didn't get all the blood you would get in a movie done today, but it was implied. You know, there was a lot of bloodless bodies back in the 40s, apparently. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I, um, um, I, as if because I reread the uh comics recently, um, ah. in John Wagner fashion, even though it's violent and stuff, there's like humor, there's there is that underlying uh humorous stuff. Judge Dredd always had it, the uh black humor, the uh, yeah. yeah. Dark humor is so underrated in today's audiences. I feel like we've gotten away from that so much. And then when people see something that is humorous, but it has that darkness to it, they're like, okay, I'm confused. Was it a comedy? Was it a horror film? And I think some people like um, Jordan Peele are trying to go back to that. If you watch his version of the Twilight Zone TV oh, yeah. series, um, it it's very film noir. It's very dark comedy, and you you know you're laughing, and then suddenly you're embarrassed that you're laughing because maybe you shouldn't be laughing at this, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> which then makes it even better because I love that that sort of dark psychology and and abnormal psychology that we humans have so well, so. <laughs> I, I think it's an indication of how much he must have worked at it at the time. John Wagner's still interested in the project 30 years yeah. later. Yeah. He still has respect for his earlier work to want to 
put it out there again. Um, it's not like it's just a publishing house going, we're repeating, you know, we're reprinting right. something for the umpteenth time. Um, you know, it's the man who wrote it. It's the, it's in fact, sorry, it's the creative duo who were, who were the driving force behind mm -hmm. it saying, yep, we want to put our names to the product again and, and make it, and make it available. So I've got a lot of respect. And I think, um, and Steve and I as well, because we grew up reading these these stories. And at one point, John was literally writing the whole of the comic that we grew up reading, 2000 AD. No. Very yeah. Um, his, think, his writing is just, he doesn't put spare words in. You know, he no. he, he makes big decisions about how he writes. And, the, and, the, and the, mm. I wouldn't say it's a minimalist. I'm just trying to say it's a, you know, a paucity of, of writing, isn't it? Unlike me, I can waffle on for ages. <laughs> John will just say three <laughs> words and you just go... Oh, yes. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say there's an absolute art to it because, and again, as much as he's, he's highly decorated in the writing circle, I still think he's completely underrated as a writer and Alan. Like, yeah. I just think that the, their body of work and what's actually in there, when you sort of dissect their writing, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Oh, and also, sorry, we need to mention as well, of course, the original series was written by John Wagner and Alan Grant. Mm. So right. Alan Grant, for most of American listeners, would he 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 wrote some of the best bogey, uh, some of the best Batman, Batman. strip. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. But um, you know, I, Alan Grant and uh, John Wagner were t didn't they write they wrote Judge Dredd together at one point? They were writing a lot of things together. Yes, their writing, uh, Monica, was T.B. Grover. When you saw yeah, a yes, T.B. Yes. Grover strip, it was the both of them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, Long John Silver. Uh, I don't know how many aliases um, John Wagner had, because at some point, literally some of these times, he was writing two, third, He was writing for 2000 AD weekly, right. 20 Oof. page, other, other comic books as well. It was just a fun, you know, someone with phenomenal output. And uh, I mean, he's written Strontium Dog and yeah. Rover Hunter and created some of the other best, you know, um, British British comic inventions of the last 40 years. And um, I think it's just great. We, 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 we don't see him that regularly. We catch up once a year, twice a year at various events. Um, and again, we're just so... I think, I, I think it goes to show how far we've come that, that John's prepared to, to invest with us yeah. In, in, yeah. In, in us putting, you know, putting this together for him. I kind of feel like just like with Lifeboat, this is again, a passion project. This is somebody's soul that they want to commit to paper. And the fact that I think you guys are gaining the reputation of respecting and, um, you know, not only are you in awe because you've grown up with some of these artists and writers, but you guys want to put out a quality product Definitely. that you would be proud of both when you were young and now you as an adult. And because you have that love and you have that respect, I think, I think words getting out there. <laughs> <sighs> Which is why you have these two projects where they know you guys will take care of their, their yeah. passion and their soul. And you're going to give us something that is phenomenal. And Steve said something we do as well, Vicky. Steve said, um, if, 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 if we was, you know, if we could make money out of this, it's not our raison d'etre. It's not right. what we're about. You know, Hey, right. everyone needs to make a dollar, but Steve's got a job. I've got a job, you know, we, 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 we can afford to do it the way we do it and we're not trying to screw every dime out of every page right so i think the point being is that people realize that we're actually in it for for the love of the medium yes and, yes and, and these people's work Still, i think we're 100 on your behalf if you feel that no no you're right um i think we're 100 percent as well what we are is 100 percent transparent with everybody we talk to because yeah you know we know that it's got to work for both sides absolutely has to work for both sides and both sides have to have the passion in the project. So if something, you know, there's been, there's been a lot of projects this guy, they don't all make it through, obviously. And of course, if one side is not feeling it the same way as the other side, or don't feel it can work together, we, you know, we, it's easy enough for us to go, right. Okay. I hope you do well with your project. Um, yeah. It's just not going to be with us. That's fine. 
and equally we've got you know there's some there's some good stories that they haven't wanted to go with us but that's it's got to work for both sides and um we're finding some big names now who are really appreciating the way we we do i say do business uh you know uh-huh. we're not making a huge amount of money out of this we're just trying to get I think the the progress of the business is the secondary to the product and the right. quality yes. to put it out, which should always be like that because it will follow. Which is the opposite of the American comic right. uh, companies that we're talking about. Wow. Um, oh, uh, what else can we uh, mention about this <laughs> book? I'm, I'm flabbergasted at this point. Um, I really can't wait to see it. Um, How big is it, Ben? It's absolutely huge. Isn't okay, it? oh, okay so, yeah, because um, it's four issues. Because yeah, it's many issues. It's a collection. Oh, so. many, many. So we're looking at 280 pages of strips. Ooh. We're looking at 20 to 30 to 40. John's yet to decide the pagination exactly of features. Right. Plus covers. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if you guys ever bought the collected Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be oh. that size because it's that Are many. Are you kidding? That many pages, so it's going to be exactly the same size because it's going to be standard US. So right. two hundred and sixty by one hundred and seventy. What's that? Ten and a ten and an eighth by seven and a quarter. I don't know. You guys use some weird measuring system. I don't know <laughs> so we're two hundred and sixty mil by one hundred and seventy mil. Mm. It's the American comic size, and yeah, it's going to be you know an inch thick, which is bad for me because obviously i'm calculating all of the shipping i was going to say um, that shipping to the united states or elsewhere in the world wow um, let me tell you can i okay keep chatting i'm going to bring up i'm going to look online and be able to tell you some information about those prices okay i'm sure sure oh American. cool okay so page carry on and I'll, uh... yeah on that page count i think what you're going to find is that it's going to be on the kickstarter it's a very reasonably priced product mm-hmm. for that page yeah. when you actually look at some of the other stuff that's out on kickstarter and you've got this quality running through it Right. Yeah, it, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna adorn anybody's bookshelf. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. So yeah, I can't wait to get hold of it. And okay, the so the top cover, um, and I think everything's getting signed by John and uh, by Robin. Oh, and, wow. if you, and if you if you get the Mike Perkins Mike signing books and everything, um, you've got. Okay, so is 20 it's just over 20 dollars for the book and the mm. postage is around about 15 dollars so that's not, not bad cheap, cheap. okay so then on the hardback i'm afraid it's a little okay. bit tougher to follow that's <laughs> because the book weighs two pounds yeah you know um and we got to ship it across the water right uh, let's have a look duh, 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 duh. okay so it's 35 dollars for the hard the hardback mm-hmm. and the postage Actually, the postage only comes in at three dollars more, so you're looking around oh. about twenty. Oh my gosh, $18, twenty dollars just... for postage. Right. That's a steal. so just over fifty, basically. Yeah, I mean, what we are trying to do is obviously, well, people would know this when they read a Kickstarter. There's information in there, and I, I appreciate some people listening. To this might not know what we're talking about. So, Kickstarter is a crowdfunder. You pledge a head. You have to. You have to. Mm-hmm. Ship, you have to put your de- your card details in. And then you're only charged for the um, project should it reach funding. Right. And then that only happens when the project finishes. And usually these projects last between four and six weeks. Now, um, what we've gone what we've gone for here is we're not doing international standard international, which is um, air freight. We're going to do um, surface mail. Right. But we're finding at the moment from the UK. Um, Okay, so uh, Mr. Baumgarten, um, yes. you received some comics from the 77. Was it yesterday? Or uh, it was or? Friday. Friday, I there was a package, that. nice package with yeah, uh, the I standard copy. Two weeks ago. Yep, I yeah. posted those two weeks ago, oh. Surface Mail. Yeah. So that's how long it took you to get yours. But it can be up to four weeks. But it's And thank you for the art card. Appreciate that. Oh, that was welcome. nice. You're welcome. That's beautiful. Um, what we're going to do, by the way, for the packaging for them, we're going to use those... Um, wrapping envelopes the ones where mm-hmm. you get unfoldable with the zip lock across it right and the hardbacks are going to be bubble wrapped as well we've we've discussed this um and we want to make sure that everybody gets a product which is um you know as good a condition as we can possibly send it out to people it's going to be very important and like i say the hardbacks um are going to be signed there's going to be extra features as well so it will be going on general release um mm-hmm. you know john's going to be um, over printing um, and, and and having additions elsewhere, but you 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 won't find them with the extra little bits which a no. Kickstarter gives you. 
And where can you, well, I know the Kickstarter, well, no, actually they're listening to this. The Kickstarter campaign could be on or it's a day or two uh, before. Where can they find this Kickstarter campaign? Well, I'm hoping as well that if you've got this radio show, you'll find that there's some notes that come with the radio show. Is that correct, Mark? Yeah, it do? yeah, we yeah. on the on the web on the website and on the uh, the podcast listings. Yeah. So I've left I've left links there, but again, Kickstarter. This one is called Bogeyman. B O G I E Bogeyman. If you put that in, the fact that there's a colon and it says the incomplete case files afterwards that's a lot to take on board just gotcha. the bogey man <laughs> and you will find it okay but go to our website marku42.com there will be links on that page yep um let's talk a little about uh this coming weekend you've got an, you're going you have an event that well, you're yeah, I'm, I'll, the big event for me is i go and pick up my buddy and we're going to drive to a comic con isn't that right steve <laughs> I'm the buddy, right? I'm the buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Road trip. We're going on a, we're going on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a road trip. A buddy. Oh, this sounds like a movie. Oh, it sounds like a bad <laughs> Dumb and Dumber. movie. Yeah, Dumb and Dumber on the little bike. You know. <laughs> there will be some those stuff on the way, I'm sure. <laughs> no, no. So we're going to. Um, as Steve said earlier, we sponsor Lawless, uh, originally called Lawgiver. Um, it's it's in the West Country of, in, of Britain, a beautiful city called Bristol. It's been run by Sue, um, Sue Hadrill for, I think this is the eighth edition, Steve, I'm not sure. Yeah, something like that, isn't it? I, don't, I know we went, we got messed up by COVID and we went online for a year and missed a year, I think, in there, so. Yeah, and we kind of turned up as a gang of fans about six, five, six years ago. And since then, we've just kind of been encroaching more and more. And eventually <laughs> she said, look, you really ought to help out and do something. So we said, yeah, we'll, we'll sponsor the event. And um, yeah, we love it. We, we wouldn't go back if it wasn't really our, our, our as the English would say, cup of tea. So <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> if I'm honest, and this is probably a story echoed by a lot of fans there. So it was the first convention I'd been to in decades after returning to right. the and I was absolutely blown away because not only was it, it had a very British comics uh, centric theme. There was so many, so many names there and they're so approachable. It's so easy. to Ugh, talk. I love that. It's such a relaxed thing. There was uh, um, at a time, I'm not sure if this changed at all. It was that artists were sketching like for fun rather mm. than you know, everything being about a photograph or costume this, a sketch will cost you that blah 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 it didn't have that vibe to it you could hang out in the uh the hotel bar and just end up in conversation with you know some of the some of the the people you absolutely put on a pedestal as a child so i loved it we all loved it it's actually the first time that i'd already been working online with uh, the other guys on the 77 for a couple of years and it was the first time we saw each other in the flesh, I think, at that convention. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's got it's got really good memories for me, and we've loved it every year since. Cool. I I, I I'd like to compare it to fun. sort of the opposites, the the antithesis of what it is. Do either of you know how many people actually go on a day to San Diego Comic Con? Uh, it's um, what, capped 3, out at about. Um, I think 30, it's capped 000? at 50,000 for the entire Is it 50, weekend. So, okay. So if because they can't expand. Well, I 30,000. 30, okay, sure. I was going to yeah. 30,000. I think 50, any given moment, there's 30,000 people okay. in so if that it was compared complex. To, if it was compared and scaled up, it's exactly, it's 30,000, you said, for San Diego. Mm -hmm. So Lawless is 100 times smaller. It's 300, okay? Okay. Ooh. If it was San Diego, if it was San Diego, there would be 3,000 top-notch comic guests there wow because the ratio guests to um ticket buyers is 10 to 1 so there are 300 oh, wow. people at any one time but 30 of the best that you can go and see we've but had Ryan Pollard, we've got dave yeah. gibbons we've had mick mcmahon we've had oh I, steve i'm um, help help me out mate yeah well this. this year this year we've got you know i'd, I'd say i'd call him headliner so we've got dave gibbons we've yeah. got mick mcmahon We've got, yeah, last Glenn year, I Fabry. think Bolland probably fell into that category, Glenn February. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, big names from this, the US market as well as the UK market. Um, and there's just, yeah, jump onto the Lawless website and you'll see a full listing of everyone and you'll recognize a lot of names. Right. 
See, I uh, like the smaller cons myself too. We had a couple of them out here in Reno because there's a lot of us out here. There, there's a very large group of people like me out here, and they we had a couple for three years. We have some smaller ones that we actually do internally, but I mean, they, it was fabulous. We had some real artists. We had Neil Adams come out twice. Um, before he passed and that was awesome I actually have several pieces of, of his art up on my wall and it just I loved it so much better than some of the bigger ones I went to when I was younger um, I went to a Star Trek convention in hang on 94 uh-huh. and in Denver and it was insane and that was pittance compared to what it is now I just you know 3,000 people I can handle more than that, I think that, um, and I use a wizard chair, so I really don't like it now. <laughs> so <laughs> just like, I, I love the smaller cons. I feel like they're more personal. I feel like you can actually talk to people. I like to be able to talk to the talent. I like mm-hmm. to watch them sketch or watch them do whatever it is that they do. And uh, I think that having more like this um, I've actually never been to San Diego and I don't think I ever will. Um, I, just, for us, I don't think I can uh, handle it's a, it. A, it's, it. It's as much as a, what we call a busman's holiday, that <laughs> notion of it being an enjoyable time together, doing something that we like. I mean, we don't get me wrong. We do Thought Bubble. Um, we do LICAF, which is another big event. We do, we're going to do London Comic Film Festival um, this, mm. this, this time out you know, we, we, LFCC, sorry, we're doing the big ones now, but for us, this is a sort of spiritual home because yeah. yes, we like the opportunity. Also what Steve would agree with, it's a great place to network and to maybe get oh, the next. Well, let me jump in. Let me just throw something out there as well. So this started last year as sponsor, uh, the program for the event. So um, actually after conversations with Sue Hadrill runs the event, I took over producing the the program for them and actually i wrote i wrote a story uh we created a superhero for them mm-hmm. uh, nice. um and there's a story that runs through the program i've just completed the second program um with a new story this year and each page of that story last year and this year is drawn by a different artist that is attending the event so it's a really oh, nice wow event. all right uh like guys that's we, phenomenal we, we have to we have to stop i hate this we to stop. <laughs> but we're going to continue on the extended version so are you able to join us for that absolutely i'm the good Steve, yes. are you okay <laughs> okay yeah. um, if you want if you want more information for uh, the lawless convention go to lawlesscomiccon.co.uk we will put that in our notes our liner notes as well um so let me thank for this section uh ben Hollis and Steve Bull for coming on the show. Vicky, thanks for uh, helping with us, as usual. As usual. As usual. Um, and remember, the uh, Ian Gibson's Lifeboat Kickstarter, and uh, soon, t- and this week we'll start John Wagner's Bogeyman, uh, the Incomplete Case Files. That is on Kickstarter, uh, and please go to that and uh, contribute and get a great comic and get perks and it, they're great we are so happy that we have you guys on all the time we'll be right back don't go away don't go away we'll, we'll be, be back, back with more mark who 42 after this the pull bag is gcrn's comic book review and discussion based podcast join me tfg and mike and the rest of the gcrn crew as we discuss the comics we are reading right now inside the pull bag you'll also find the origins of how guests got into or out of reading comics after dark discussions and so much more you can find the pull bag every wednesday which is new comic book day only on geekcastradio.com and on anywhere you consume your podcasts. Make your greatest game into comics and jump into the pull bag today. Hey everybody, if you still hear my voice, you're listening to the Mark Who 42's Universe podcast, the extended version of our radio show. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten, 
with me as ever, and I'll say it again, our lovely co-host, Vicki Jakubowski. <laughs> okay, and, we'll go with that one. <laughs> yeah. And our uh, continuing to be our guest from the radio version, the 77 Publications own Ben Collis and Steve Bull. Welcome back, guys. You two Bye. included. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we were talking about Ian Gibson's lifeboat, and we're talking about John Wagner's bogeyman, and we're talking about Lawless. Let's talk a little about maybe what is coming out now or being released now and what's coming up in the future for the 77 publications. Okay, so Steve just reminded me that um, we do have our standard regular uh, comic, the 77, where it all started from. Um, hey, Steve, did you know, actually, last week was our three-year anniversary of our comic being released? Oh, wow. Should... That's, that's worth a celebration, though, isn't it? Let's lift the yeah, it? It we'll celebrate this week. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's all drink. <laughs> let's all drink. Hold your drink. You can't see us, but we've all got our Guinness, and we're just drinking now. <laughs> Exactly. So we'll be celebrating that. Um, so yeah, number nine. Number nine was um, successfully launched in March. It got printed only over just around Easter time. So that's really just hitting shelves now. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be working on number 10 towards the fall. Um, and Haunted. This comic is Haunted. Dave Healy's fabulously scary romp. Um, number two was successfully launched and I should be receiving some box of, I don't know if you know this thing, when you have a whole bu box, load of boxes of freshly printed comics turn up, your whole house smells of lovely <laughs> fresh comics. I've got that fresh comic smell. So I'll be enjoying that on Monday. Um, and, uh, yeah, and that's, and that's just how it, how it rolls around here. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm not, if I'm not, um, we're not trying to kickstart something we're fulfilling something and if we're not fulfilling something it's then gone to retail and if we're not doing that we're you know <laughs> doing it's it's great and it's yet great. somehow you still manage to have a day job i do have a day job yeah <laughs> you're like well, me I you don't work. sleep <laughs> uh no nor does steve i think steve works more than i do <laughs> it's combined effort and just on that point why isn't there a car freshener that's new comic smell. <laughs> that may, you know, you're right. You're right. I'm Somebody sure should come, come up with, with that and, and patent it and make a beep load of money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. that. That's a great idea. Actually, you should copyright that idea right now. Doing it. That's it. Okay. Doing it. There you go. And then if someone wants to make it, they have to pay you proceeds. <laughs> that works. Well, uh, I'm going to have to have a British version and an American version because a new American comic smells differently than a new British comic. We could, we could do them all. We can have um, <laughs> 70s or 60s British comics. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> you wanted to, yeah. People That's a me, whole nother ball of wax. When, when you people use them, you get ink on your fingers. You, yeah, <laughs> you get comics, what's the driving force? i got to say, the very first comic strip I ever did, I was aged about seven, mm -hmm. and I, I, I just ripped it from a short, so it's a Peanuts. And it's Charlie Brown panel, and they're vertical panels, or they have, you know, a panel at the top, Schultz never put, a, when he did a vertical one, he never put one in the middle, it's a panel at the bottom. And it's Charlie Brown going, I'm standing on my own, looking down in the second panel. The second one is the third panel, counting one, two feet. So it's him <laughs> counting his own two feet. Anyway, I ripped it. I did that drawing and it went into a, into, into a school newspaper. I don't know, what do you do when you're, what grade would that be? Second grade for you guys when you're at seven or eight years old? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah? And yeah. then... We had what we called a bander. Now a bander. Was are we, are we going to have a glossary? At the, are we going to have a glossary at the, on the liner notes? Yeah, it was a cylindrical printer with a winding handle that you. We put called blue those mimeographs. Mimeograph, yeah. But the and smell it had purple ink of in it, that the smell, yeah. Oh coconut. yuck! Oh no, absolutely. No, and like the kid you used to have to carry the big piles of all the printed material for the. And it was kind of damp. And warm, nice and warm in a cold yes. winter's day, you know, and that's my fondest memory. So that's, I guess I'm just trying to recreate that, Steve. All these comics. Oh, me just trying to my go back Lord. To oh, old. well, you just reminded me of my entire childhood. Ben, you were, you were, you're just saying uh, you, your first comic, uh, your first strip. Um, I actually, you know, when I was a kid, did some comic art um, and it was never published, but I had it. And, you know, I didn't mention this to Steve Parkhouse. Well, there's a reason we're segueing here. I didn't mention it to Steve Parkhouse, but I did a Doctor Who strip 
beast on my it's got, I should have mentioned that. The reason I'm bringing this up, um, there's a new project we've got uh, that uh, the 77 publications and Mark Who 42 is doing called Mark Who 77. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, actually, I could talk about it, but Ben, why don't you talk about it? Let me pass the book. Well, it's exciting. It's got it's got a video. It's got theme music. We've mm-hmm. I've, I've 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 got banners, Steve. I've got a new banner. I haven't, <laughs> you haven't seen the new banner yet. You haven't seen the reveal, guys. Can I just do this? I'm going to go on to mute. You can okay. talk about Steve and what he was doing when he was seven years old in just a moment. This is the most- <laughs> Steve, I'm going to make your day. I'm going to put a banner up and hopefully you'll see it on my screen. OK, OK, so let me do that. Okay. Now, the audience won't get to see it, but we're going to get a giggle. Um, so, yeah, the Mar- Mark Who 77 will be uh, an interview is coming out this week. The first one uh, is an interview program with uh, artists and writers and right. editors who uh, are part of the 77 publications, have uh, worked with them, or just uh, British comic uh, storytellers as well. Um, Our first guest coming out this week week is Steve Parkhouse. Oh, Vicky, talk about Steve Parkhouse. Oh, my gosh. He was wonderful to talk with. Just discussing his um, body of work. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who told us that, you know, it's not an artist or or writer. It's a storyteller. And he was so right. It's like he is trying to convey whether it's artistic medium or it's in words um, story. And he just he was so much fun to talk to. And I think everyone has, they, they have to come watch it because it just, it was just too much fun. And if you want to know about, you know, really what it's like to have been in this industry for multiple decades, I mean, he is just phenomenal. And he was so willing to answer all of my crazy questions. May I interrupt for a second? Folks, you're listening to some noise. <laughs> that noise is Ben. Getting his setup for his backdrop. We're just he's gone into construction. Can you hear this? He's const- yes, yes, we can hear it all, darling. Got, I'm, I'm supposed to okay. be on mute. Um, oh, you, so, you, no, okay. No, there you go. that's all right. Now you're on mute. <laughs> uh, the second show we've done, um, and it should be out within the next two weeks, is an interview with Mike Collins, who um, part of his work that he does is storyboarding on a little show we like to call our favorite doctor who um and he, both of them uh, steve and mike have worked on 2000 ad and now now they're uh steve uh, mike has done artwork for two uh strips in the 77 and steve is you know they're, everyone's working and it's not just myself and vicky doing the interviewing um oh that's oh that's a beauty <laughs> Yeah, I wish you guys could see this. Lifeboat, oh wow! Um, banner. Oh, this, oh it is I love very that. Very awesome looking. Yeah, Ian Gibson's lifeboat, and it's a night. Nice, oh, I love that picture. Uh, ben, you are part of Mark Who Seventy Seven as well, aren't you? Yeah, I'm also a sound effects engineer. If you need ever need any. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. What I thought I turned my microphone off, but that's not <laughs> turning my microphone off is not the same as muting, is it? No, no it's not, not at all. Uh. Ah, right. Okay. So yeah, I'm a, I'm 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 with the pre- I I uh, yeah. There we go. I've made the I've made the minor leagues now. Here we go. So uh, yeah. you know, working with you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> so you get to see our three mugs, our pretty <laughs> mugs, with the uh, person we're interviewing. Um, it's going to be on the seventy seven publications uh, YouTube page. Where is that? YouTube.com at what? Uh, the no 77 publications. Okay. And, and you'll be able to... I can, I can mention, if it's okay, I can mention some up-and-coming um, guest artists. We don't, guests. we don't know when they're necessarily coming, but these are mm-hmm. people who have um, agreed that they would like to do the show. Shall we, shall we run through some Yeah, of let's go yeah, through. Yeah, I want, I'd love to find out who I get to interview. Yes. Excellent. Well, apparently two guys are turning up called Ben and Steve at Lifeboat. That's the 42. Sorry, that's very confusing. <laughs> um, so we've got there's, another, wait, there's another 42 coming up too, isn't there? There's another Mark Who 42. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to run through. These These, these people are, are confirmed there. So we're trying to get a vein of um, creators and artists and such like who we're working with. Um, some of these may want well to be known to, to all of our listeners, but if you are... Um, 
buying our, our, our books, you would have seen these, these people's work in them. Um, Andrew Sawyers um, has agreed. So Andrew is best known for his work on The Cell with Bambus yeah. Georgiou um, and uh, on uh, Silver Jubilee with Dave Healy. Oh, yeah. He uses psycho, psycho artwork. Um, and Steve, you've had the pleasure of editing um, Andy's artwork quite a lot, haven't you? And you've, you, you find it um, very, very you know, it's, 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 he's got what you could describe it kind of like a forceful style. He's got kind of kind of a high impact style of artwork, isn't he? Yeah, it's incre it's incredible stuff. It's very dynamic. Uh, if you're going to compare it to another uh, artist, it probably has vibes of Jock, who I know is a major if influence with him. Um, and he's got this psycho uh, coloring scheme that he uses very distinctive. But yeah, it's very impactful. It's got a huge fan base with it. Um, yeah, it'll blow you away. Absolutely, that's right. Um, we've got um, Warwick Fraser Coombe, who we've worked with for uh, over a year now on a strip called um, Galactic Geographic. Oh, yeah. And Warwick has done some incredible books in his time, has been published for 15 years, got his own art studio, does commissions. He's also done um, a recent series, I think, um, Rogue Trooper um, <laughs> for 2000 AD. Um, we've got the Healy's will be turning up, so Dave will come and talk. Yay, Dave and Joe! I Dave love and Joe. Dave and Joe. Then we've got Ian Stopforth, um, amazing artist who. We've oh kind yeah, of... I, we had him. On, we had him on the show uh, Forty Two as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's got new projects as well. Um, we've got uh, Sue Hadrill will come and talk about um, Lawless. We'll give her a chance to have a break first. Um, I okay. Think it'd be, <laughs> she. <laughs> It was it wasn't possible to get ahead ahead of um, Lawless, but I think it'd be lovely to have her on because she's really kind of you know, as I said, the 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 it's a community that she's building around this convention, and she's got a, a phrase that she says um, people come for people come for the guests, but they stay for the for for the tribe. You know, the mm -hmm. fact is that I it's it. It, or they come back for the tribe. It's it's like the point is that friendships are made there and it's like we've got people who will turn up from the states and from australia who you know are, are just friends of people and 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 will come back because they love it so much and 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 she's really working hard on on developing and and, and getting this show further de developed um lou stringer said he'll do a show oh, so wow. you know, yes artists, yes he's celebrating i think he's celebrating 40 years in the business this year um Quite incredible, really. We're so lucky to have Lou working with us. Um, done some great, great work with us with Sergeant Shouty. Um, supports us so much as well. He's got a great blog as well as all the work that he does. Um, and Robert Lewis Jones, who does Joe Healy's um, uh, Black by Day, Red by Red Night. By night. And then there's a couple of people, three people who we're hoping, I've just got to get them to confirm. I'm going to mention names. It doesn't matter. Okay. Hopefully we can get all three of them to sign up when we go to Lawless. We'll have Dan Cornwall, um, who's done Rock the God uh, with John Wagner, mm -hmm. but is now pretty much a resident um, Judge Dredd artist. Oh, um, John yeah. Higgins, obviously, Ooh. Watchman, um, et cetera. Um, and David Roach, who's uh, a fabulous um artist in his own right but he's probably best known for putting the apex editions of artists together which are those large format books of british artists he works with rebellion and mm -hmm. um yeah he's going to be he's going to be um speaking with us about um maybe coming on a show as well he's someone who if you want to discuss almost any aspect of american or or european or south american or british um comic books over the last 50 years he's he he's the guy who puts all these encyclopedias out it's incredible he he has a he has a, a vast knowledge of this work so those are just a few people that i've sort of tried to um sign up and 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 hopefully we'll have a a, a few more which we'll you know speak to so um yeah that's that's what's going to be coming up on on, on 70 on mark Q 77 yeah Oh, I I'm mean, excited. We're excited. We're very excited. <laughs> and I'm glad that you allowed us and we're, we're working together on this project. It, it's really, really good. You should check it out. Like I said, Steve Parkhouse this week, uh, at the end of the week, either the weekend or the following week, Mike Collins. It, they are amazing interviews. I'm editing as we, yeah, I'm editing as I'm doing the podcast right now. I'm not paying attention to the podcast. <laughs> I'm editing. Uh, no, I'm editing uh, the shows right now and they are awesome. I want to give a shout out to Lucha Libre for um, doing uh, the uh, title sequences uh, for us. Um, they are beautiful. He did the music as well. 
They are really very good. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, thank you, Luce. What, what is what what is it that Luce Libre does again, Ben? What's the? Uh... I don't know. What was it? Something to do with his name? I I don't know what 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 Lestat Lucha Libre wrestler does. I don't know what he does. <laughs> But he's no, he's. Is he he's a vampire? A real... Is he a vampire? Because he's called Lestat. Lestat. He's a vampire yes, who that... wrestles by day. That, okay, you got it. That's who he is. Okay, we have to have him on the show talking about wrestling and being a vampire. Why not? Except, not? except he... didn't you say he speaks Spanish? Oh, my Spanish Mexican? is really rusty. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, he's 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 been uh, he. Well, the contact that we had uh, was a gentleman um, I think you may have met on different shows, Mark. Um, Vicky, I don't know if you, you, you have been in the same show or not. A uh, gentleman uh, from um, S South California, uh, Stephen Ross. And um, Yeah, we, I, I was at a launch party. Yeah, we talked mm -hmm. at a launch party. And uh, he, We never he, got he, him on the show. We never got him on the show. I don't know what happened. Well, you know, it can happen. It can yeah. happen. It would have to be more your time, though, wouldn't it? I, 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 is he closer? He must be closer to you, Vicky. You're, am I right? Uh, I yeah. Same time zone. Same time zone. Same time zone. Yeah. You're in the same uh, time zone. California, okay. Northern California is 30 minutes from my house. Right. The border is only about 30 minutes from my house. Yeah. So. so they're I Pacific. Arcadia. They're the Pacific I think it's Arcadia. Time. I'm trying to remember the town he's in. So uh... Uh, I think that is Southern California. So that's about eight hours south of me. Yeah, but same time zone. Yeah. Same time zone. Yeah. Eight oh, I see that drive all the time. That's eight how hours I go to north Disneyland. of us is Iceland, <laughs> so uh, that's where we are. You know. <laughs> well, I've always Steve, wanted I've to go to Iceland. Iceland. I've always wanted to go to Iceland. I always wanted to go to Iceland. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, there was a lull. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Yeah, so, um, let's talk a little more about Lawless. Um. You were talking, so you're a tribe, and you mm -hmm. gather, you hunt and gather. Um, anything else? <laughs> yeah, there are no loincloths involved. If people are kind of thinking it's a big oh. kind of like burning man or something, it's not, you know, we're not quite out in the spears, desert or anything. You know. You know. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's we'll have, have to go and take that out of my bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No loincloths this, uh, this time. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's held in a Hilton double tree in the center of a cosmopolitan city. It's it's not quite. Oh, what the heck! Oh. Sounds like fit right in. <laughs> any any good restaurants are... or pubs? <laughs> yeah, we've got some great bars. Um, mm -hmm. There's there, there's a whole contingent who go out um, on on patrol, and the reason they mm -hmm. go on to patrol is because they'll be the um, they'll be all of the judges and other kind of you know fearsome looking cosplayers will go out and stomp around town quite you know. <laughs> for an hour in the middle of the day um steve, and, see, I, though, steve and i will find a quiet place to have a, a glass of coke and actually there i put go. steve through me my team losing a, a a final in the in 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 the in the um was it ecl last year uh, that was Lawless last year yeah i need yeah uh, well there we go we don't want to talk about football it's, do we it's something to see though isn't it the judges so obviously yeah. i think sue who organized the con i think she says she did it because a lot of her friends were like into the judge dread cosplay kind of thing uh, and what they do is you end up with like you know 10 to 20 of these judges in a small space all looking <laughs> mean so it's hard not to look mean when you've got a, a judge's helmet on right so um yeah it's, it's, it's a thing to behold to be fair yeah, yeah i've done a lot of cosplaying in my life i've never done a judge <laughs> done a judge no <laughs> well okay not a judge dread but i did do a judge once but that was a long story um okay go ahead we have all the time in the world this is an audio show remember go okay for it. so at my work we do an amazing halloween um party every year for all 200 plus of our employees and um we get a little crazy and we do a costume contest. And so one year they decided that all of us in the administration should dress up as judges and judge the Halloween contest. I did, however, get, get everyone to dress up in Star Trek uniforms one year. I don't know how I managed it. I tried for years. Nobody would do it. And then finally I got enough people, all my IT guys and my gals in admin, everyone dressed up. I got them all Star Trek uh, uniforms from the original series and they all dressed up appropriately. I don't think wonderful. it'd be hard. I don't think it'll be hard to get IT guys to 
do cosplay. No, my IT guys will do it. They're anytime. fine. They're, they're, yeah, they're yeah just that's fine. that's what my IT guy does. The other ones. Uh, uh, there was one time I had a um, I had a manager, and I have enough Renaissance costumes that I was like, you know, we could do Henry the Eighth and four of his wives. You know, I even have an <laughs> Anne Boleyn. I could do the whole neck thing, and yeah, I couldn't get them to go for that one either. So. <laughs> So have you been have you been Lucretia Borda a Borgia? <laughs> no, but I have been Elizabeth Bathory. <laughs> Very highbrow. Very high there you brow. go. The most I, I've I, ever I love, I love high my brow. royalty. Um, yeah, the, the most I've ones. ever done is put one of those dinosaur suits on and run around. You know, that's no. all I've ever done. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, there's a family joke because I'm the shortest one in the family, yeah. and. Um, they refer to my very short arms as being T-Rex arms. So I'm given a lot of T-Rexes as yeah. gifts by my well, family. I know this is radio, but if people saw Steve, they'd know that Steve goes everywhere as Mark Strong. That's who he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. That um, worked. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. Perfect. That, that is perfect. <laughs> um, you can't see it, folks, but it was perfect. Um, I've done I, – I, did I do cosplay? I – one year I went as the fourth doctor. I had the scarf. My grandmother knitted me a scarf. It was the right length and everything. Did you have a fedora? Yes, I did, actually. Those aren't hard to get. That was really easy to pick up off the shelf. Oh, um, yeah. And one year uh, at a convention, I was Zaphod Beeblebrox. And I won Best Media. <laughs> John Pertwee. Which head were you? Were you the left or the right head? <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. The head, it was, yeah, I was the left head because the right head was, <laughs> yeah. Um, and John Pertwee himself was the one who gave me the award because nice. he wanted me to. He wanted me to be best costume, period. But it was a Doctor Who convention, and they're going, no, you can't give it to him. It's got to be a Doctor Who uh, cosplay. <laughs> so he put up a fuss, and they made a, a a category best media, and they had to make a. Uh, they had to go and get me a trophy. They had to make one because it wasn't there. So I had to, I had to wait a couple of weeks for my trophy. <laughs> but that was kind of cool. Excellent. Oh, and I dress up as the Time Lord Mark Who 42 when I go to convention. <laughs> Got my you nice know, little I, I Peter davison isk uh, jacket. And, yeah. I've never, well, that's not true. I have done Sarah Jane a few times. Ooh. But um, other than that, I just I've never done um, a Doctor Who. I've always done. Well, let's see. <laughs> uh, it kind of shows my age too. Lots <laughs> of Star Trek. Um, I've I've done Princess Leia, original mm -hmm. white. I never, even when I was younger, never would have done Return of the Jedi. Not in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my father, uh, old military man, would have murdered me before I made it out the door. Um, <laughs> but um, I've done elves from Lord of the Rings. Um, oh, my God. I have so many costumes in my closet. And having not pulled anything out for three years has been really weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I now need to find something to go to. My son's trying to convince me to go to the uh, SAC anime, Sacramento um, anime convention that they do every year. It's a really nice one. It's not too huge because um, I love anime too. All those years living in Hawaii, I have to love anime. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah, my daughter loves anime. Yeah, I'm trying to get into it. Well, I, I of course, love the anime from my childhood in the yeah. 70s. And then um, I got my son hooked, unfortunately. Um, my son loves all the weird crap that we love. <laughs> but he's now 28. So, um, and he has his own wall of art and um, figurines and you name it. Um, he was really big into uh, Power Rangers because he was coming of age during that. And Jason David Franks was um, his idol. And uh, that was hard when, when he died earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but because I actually, for, God, it must have been like his 25th birthday, I sprung for, he was in town and I sprung for this big deal so that he could go and hang out with him, have lunch with him, do a mm -hmm. whole meet and greet with him. 
you know, um, that that's what I do for birthdays. <laughs> For, for my husband's birthday, he got a sword fighting class with Adrian Paul. Ooh. So, oh yeah, he came he came to Reno for for a con, and he was doing a sword fighting class. I'm like, oh my god, my husband would love that. He ta- he teaches uh, martial arts and and other things, and it's just like, okay, I have to do that. Pull into the savings account. I have to do that. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's Adrian Paul uh, Highlander series. Yes, yes. yes. I love he that was series, so you know? nice. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to re- religiously watch that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's cool. I'm jealous now. I want a sword fighting class. <laughs> <laughs> I understand he's going to be starting to do them again. So, you know, if you get one of the events he goes to. But, um, I mean, that's can, what I love. There can be only one, concept. surely. There, well, yeah. yes. Okay, there, there we go. <laughs> you had to slip that joke in there, Steve. You had well, to put it in there. It was waiting, wasn't it? Well, I mean, if you didn't do it, someone else would have. So that's good. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I want to go through a list of uh, places, links that you should find. They will all be on our website. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mark Um Ian Gibson's Lifeboat Kickstarter. Go to Kickstarter and type in Ian Gibson's Lifeboat. Uh, John Wagner's Bogeyman. Uh, the incom- the uh, complete the incomplete case files. Let's get that right. The incomplete case files. You can go to Kickstarter and type in John Wagner's Bogeyman. Uh, for more information on Lawless, which is happening this coming weekend, go to lawlesscomiccon.co.uk. We know we have British listeners, so we're letting you know. Uh, we have a lot of around the world. We, you know, I look at the uh, the demographics on um, where people listen to us, our, our podcast. Wow, we're all over the place. Um, for the seventy seven publications themselves, go to the seventy seven comic dot net. There are so many. Uh, they've got a few uh, Facebook um, groups. Uh, we want to list them, Ben. Oh, goodness me. Um, the 77 <laughs> comic, Blazer, uh, This Comic is Haunted, Pandora, The Imagination of Ian Gibson, The John Wagner Appreciation Group, and I've probably forgotten half a dozen, Steve. <laughs> oh, uh, and the, uh, the uh, not necessarily the 77, but the, uh, the group that you started uh, 2000 AD. Combination. So that is 77 to 2000 AD. So 77 high from 2000 got AD. Group. That's where we've got 16,000 sci fi nuts uh, just posting and having a great time. Yeah. Um, and to watch the new interview video series, Mark Who 77, go to YouTube and you can either uh, you can look in the search box for Mark Who 77 or uh, go to youtube.com slash at the 77 publications. Yeah, okay. we've got our channel as well. That's, wow, what a, lot of, what a lot of media things we've got to mention these days. Eh? <laughs> yeah. And, We're everywhere. <laughs> and I can't wait for uh, the publishing of This Comic is Haunted 2 this week so we can get out there and maybe I'll get it. I'm sure I'll get it soon. And, and of course, the digital copy comes out first. Or... Yeah, that'll be sent out this week. So if anyone's um, pledged, they'll get it. But it would be available also in our shop, and it's only like a couple of pounds. We don't mm-hmm. we don't art charge much for our digital. Stuff. Right, because basically anything you've done on the Kickstarter campaign is on the seventy seven comic dot net. Correct. We do bundles of really very good value, and obviously you don't pay postage for a, a digital download, do you? No, so... you don't. Not at all. Save your money for uh, the bogey man. <laughs> we also need to mention Steve's bu- 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 bullies boot camp because you know he's 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 he got his. You know, I'm doing that up. today. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, wearing Please. the shirt again. Visual. We can't. That's, that's why visual, you go, Sorry. That's why you At go. Bullies watch boot camp. That's yeah, why go you go. Go bullies boot camp on any media. You'll find uh, some workout and uh, fitness and nutrition advice. <laughs> but for the visual <laughs> problem, go to Mark Who Seventy Seven. Watch those. They are mm-hmm. amazing. I, and Vicky, I, what's I'm the guy, Vicky, what's the name of the law firm we should be all <laughs> <laughs> Yes. There are lawyers involved, folks. Some of them are, <laughs> some of them might even be real. 
Is it called cool, Better Call cool Saul or something like that? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to get ourselves in deep trouble with this. And Bob Odenkirk is going to be the head lawyer. <laughs> On that note, folks, oh. we're going to end the show here at the Mark Who 42's Universe podcast. I uh, want to thank the 77 Publications' own Ben Cullis and Steve Bull. Thank you, guys. Oh, it was hey, thanks for having us. Thank you to Vicky Jakubowski, our lovely co-host. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and myself, Mark Baum. Oh, I'm saying it wrong. I was going to say myself, Mark Who 42, but no, my <laughs> no, I'm not at a convention. Myself, Mark Baumgarten. Until next time. Oh, and remember, coming soon, we're going to have a uh, John Wagner interview on Mark Who 42. That's going to be great. Uh, tune in next week for an all new show until next time bye everyone thanks for listening to Mark Who 42's Universe featuring Mark Baumgarten Eduardo M. Fryer Vicky Jakubowski and Zion Kuros this show was produced and directed by Mark Baumgarten if you'd like to get in touch with us go to our Facebook page or email us at markwho42s.universe at gmail.com Our radio show airs weekly on Subspace Radio Network at www.subspace.radio and on iHeartRadio You can listen to our old shows at our website markwho42.com and many podcast platforms such as iTunes, Audible, and Pandora And if you want to hear shows dating back to 2012 with over 150 celebrity interviews Try our YouTube page, Marku42. Marku42's Universe, copyrighted 2023.